In this video, we're going to learn about natural language understanding at an entry level. So let's start with what is natural language understanding, also known as NLU, which is just an acronym, of course, for natural language understanding. So in a sense, this is the way that you can train uh, a computer to be able to understand the words that someone is saying and be able to take action based upon that. There are two key concepts that you want to understand or key terms that are important when we're talking about natural language understanding. One is intents and the other is entities. So let's start with what is an intent. An intent is, think of it as this is what you intend or an action that you're looking to do, uh, the overall statement of kind of what you're intending the, uh, in your statement. When you talk about entities, entities are more of the additional pieces of information that you are passing when you are saying something. So we will double click this and explore it a little further with some examples. Let's start with an example of just something really simple um, because at Microsoft, we always try to think of things around pizza for some reason and ordering pizza. We're just gonna use a, a very simple uh, statement of something, which is, I want to order a large pepperoni pizza. Now, that's very easily understood uh, by most people, what we're talking about here, right? So let's take this apart and let's look at it from an intent perspective. So if we look at what is the actual intent of this sentence, it's I wanna order something, right? So if you're thinking about how you're going to create uh, a conversational agent or you're trying to build a co-pilot or something of this nature, and you're also trying to train a natural language understanding model, you would look at this and say, the intent of what I want to do is I want to order something. And then you would think about what are all the different ways to say that you want to order something. And that's where you would say you're training the intent. Now, understand that, let's say that we had a conversational agent and that agent's only function was being able to order pizza. You could say, I want to order pizza was the actual intent of this because the only thing you could order is pizza. But let's say that I wanted to say that I wanna be able to order pizza or order a drink. In those cases, the actual intent is I want to order. So now let's move on to entities. You'll notice here that I have highlighted some other words in, in different colors. Uh, large, pepperoni, and pizza. Each of these are additional pieces of information that if you said to someone, I want to order something, then they would ask you, well, what do you want to order? And let's say pizza is the answer to that question. That's the first, that's an entity. And then if I went further on that, I would have to say, well, what do you want on your pizza? In this case, I would say pepperoni, yet another entity. And then you have, well, what size would you want? In the case of this, I would say large. And then I've got the complete information of what it is that you want to order. Now you could have additional uh, entities that could be the crust type of the pizza or additional uh, toppings and things of that nature. But the whole concept here is that you're really getting down to how do I express the intent, which is I want to order something, and then the additional information that's needed. Many times people don't understand that a, a person can pass uh, many different pieces of information within a statement. They don't have to, but they can. And so this is why natural language understanding models are so important. It's also important that you think about things such as what is the structure of the sentence that I'm building? And also as you go into training of a large or of a language model, you are going to understand that these will be key concepts for you to be able to build a high performing 
conversational agent or a high performing language model. So let's actually go into Copilot Studio and let's look at how we would uh, define different intents and different entities within the interface. Okay, now that we're inside of Copilot Studio, you can see that I have built just a basic uh, empty uh, conversational agent here. I've called it NLU training just for this video. And let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how we can handle these things. You'll notice here on the left hand side that you'll see topics and you'll see entities. So now you can understand what an entity would be. Um, however, let's start with intents. So if we look at this and we say, okay, we have a topic. So when I want to create a topic, it's a conversation that I want to have within, uh, within my conversational agent or copilot. In the case of this, I'm just going to do a blank topic so that we can see something from, from scratch, right? And I'm just going to hit allow here. Okay. Now, notice here that this is called a trigger. A trigger is when you want to initiate. So what initiates this conversation? And you'll actually see here that you could have all kinds of different trigger types, but phrases is the default. And the reason phrases are the default is because this is where you can train an intent within your conversational agent. So if we look at this and we say, okay, well, what, is this, what does this uh, mean? You'll see here that I can add additional phrases. Well, in this case, I can say, I want to order uh, a pizza, right? And I'm gonna train that in. Now, why am I putting the entity in it? I'm putting the entity in it because of the fact that when you're training your intent, you want to give it a structure of a sentence or samples of this. Now, how many of these should we have? Typically, we recommend that you have like five different ones for the particular model that is used for uh, Copilot Studio out of the box. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put this one in. And then let's also say, um, I need a drink, right? Uh, can I place an order for a salad? And we'll just stop here for now just to give you an idea. So notice that I'm changing the training for different things, such as drink, salad, pizza. And that's because if I wanted to train this as the intent was all my uh, topic was going to do is allow you to order pizza. And, and that was the function of my conversational agent or my co-pilot. I, I would want to put that in and train with pizza over and over because then pizza would be part of the intent, just like we discussed earlier. But in this case, what we're trying to do is make sure that it understands um, that that is a potential entity that I might want to provide. So now that I've done that and I've got a trigger here, um, what we'll do is we'll move forward and we will ask a question. So typically here, and this is where you'll see entity recognition, question behaviors, and things of this nature. So in this case, what I want to know is what do you want to order? And when I do this, the default here is a multiple choice option. So when you do a multiple choice option, you are basically building an entity, but you're not necessarily making that entity reusable in other locations. So if you really wanted to build an entity that for reuse, then you would do that by going um, and selecting that you wanted to do entity recognition and you would go through that. In the case of this one, what we're going to do is we're going to use a multiple choice option. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it some options and I'm going to say pizza, right? I'm also going to add another option, which is going to be uh, drinks, right? And I'm going to do another one, which is going to be salad. Yeah. Now, 
Now that I've done that, we can also understand that within an entity, there is this concept of a synonym. Um, so that you can say something and you can say it different ways. And if you notice when I click on pizza, I get this edit synonyms. So I could come in here and some people call a pizza a pie, some, um, you know, and all of these other things. So you could just think of what are all of the different ways that you would potentially say that, just like I could, um, make sure I save that. Yep. And you'll see here that it would drinks. Um, I might say soda. I might, I might also uh, want to put in a pop. Um, you know, some people call it a Coke, all of those types of things. So this kind of gives you an idea um, of how you can do this. So now, now that we've done that and we're, we can store that in to a variable. So we're going to collect that information uh, and store it for me to use um, to be able to pass that back to, for our ordering. So in this case, what we'll say um, is order item. Okay. So now that we've done that, uh, we can then see here that it basically said all of these different things. And we could go on and do toppings and things of that nature. I can just come in here and we can make this really quick just so that you can see it work. And I can say, um, and actually we can just, we can simplify this down. What I'll do is I'll just come down here and I'll say, okay, based upon that, I'm going to send a message back and I'm just going to say to you, I see that you want to order. And then we can just grab that variable, which is the order item. And voila. Now that we've done that, we'll do one last thing. And that last thing we're going to do is we're going to do topic management. And we're just going to end the current topic. Now, what we're with this, I'm going to also change the title here just so that we know what this is and I'm just going to call it order item and we'll save this. So now that we've done this, we're going to have this new topic and this new topic is going to be able to be fired based upon a phrase. So it'll, it'll only answer whenever we do uh, this particular thing. We can check this box here so that you can see it track. I would, like to place an order. And when I say this to the conversational agent, you're going to see now that because we've had different different options defined, what it does is it actually asks me for these different things. And I could click one of these, but I could also come in and I could say that, uh, you know, a pie. And then you'll see that we'll continue down through the conversation and it says, I see that you want to order a pizza, right? So this is me using the synonyms to be able to do this. But if I say to it something simple, like I want to order a pop, you're going to see that what it's going to do differently is it's because I pass the information along in the statement, I didn't leave the entity out. I passed the entity as part of that. You'll see that it went all the way through and it just skipped the question asking me what it was that I wanted to order. So we refer to this as slot filling. And this is a very key concept of being able to handle conversational design and author conversational experiences for co-pilots because the way that you need to think about it is I need to think about how do I train the intent, as you saw me do at the phrases, and then by me defining entities within it and forming a question to collect that entity piece of information, I have it so that I can handle it if you don't provide that information. I now have trained it to be able to get that information from you. But if you happen to pass all of the information that it's needed, it will only ask you for the things that you didn't provide. So if we went through and we did the same thing for quantity, we could 
have a question that says how many. So let's let's go ahead and let's do that just so that you can see. So if I wanted to to edit my conversation to do this, I can then say a simple question such as how many would you like? Now, in the form of the entity here, I could go and say, oh, here's what are different ways and different options for it, but I'm not going to use a multiple choice option here. What I want to do here is I actually want to take advantage, and you can see where you can create these reusable entities if you so desire. But in the case of this, know that there are out of the box entities here, and one of them is going to be that we can, and I'm just going to scroll down so you can see this huge list, right? You've got a lot of different options. Now, if you want to make it easy on yourself, if you already know, we're looking for a number. And you can see here, it even has entities for phone numbers. So I'm just going to say a number, and then we'll go here and we'll say item quantity as my uh, variable name. And then let's edit this and let's edit it so that what we have in this is that we also say how many of something that we know you want. And so I'll just come in here and I'll say item quantity and voila. And just know that if I was going to build this normally, I would also handle if it's multiples and do plural and all that type of stuff. But for the demonstration here, we're just going to make this really simple. So we're just going to save this now. Okay, and you can see that it's saved. And now if I say the same thing that I said before, like um, let's say I want to order a pop, it should come back and it would say, how many would you like? And now I could say four and you will see that it's going to say you, I see that you want to order four drinks. So hopefully this kind of helps you understand how you can do all of this. Um, but let's dive one little bit into entities themselves so that you can just get a perspective of entities. So if we click on entities and you see all the different ones, you'll see a whole bunch of pre-built ones. Know that you can create new entities um, and you can even register an external entity, which is think of it like here's a list of things I would like to provide to you. I can also come in and say here's a closed list so you can see like uh, if I wanted to do sizes, I could say small, medium, and large. Um, and you can also do things with like regular expressions. If you're unfamiliar with what a regular expression is, just think of it as an ability for you to say a zip code is five numerical digits. And so if you answer the question without it having five numerical digits, then it's not going to actually uh, get past that. It's not going to be able to find it. This is really helpful when you have things like case IDs or something like that. So like service now, I believe it's SN followed by like seven numbers or something like that. Um, so you can actually say it needs to start with a S and an N and then it needs to be seven numerical digits. And so, and if you're not familiar with how to be able to write a regular expression, there's tons of information about how to do this uh, on the internet. Just feel free to go search for uh, regular expressions, um, formats, and you'll, you'll find tons of information on how to do this. So hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Um, I want to make sure that you get some starting points for these particular type of things. This is why I'm doing my education series. And so feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you um, also uh, say some things in the comments. Let me know if there's other things that you would like to see. And as always, you can try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.